Hi everyone, and welcome to Gwen Collects. Hello everybody, happy holidays. As you can see, I have a bit more of a festive background today. As you can see, this is the first main channel video in my new house, very exciting. I don't have my collection room set up yet, so I have decided to film this video in front of kind of the Christmas setup because our living room is kind of ready at this point. So I've got the nice fireplace, Part of the Christmas tree you guys can see here behind me. The window is behind me, so I don't know how good the lighting's gonna be. I don't have my like lighting set up here yet, but I'm hoping it's okay. The sun is shining through all the other windows, so I'm hoping I'm illuminated somewhat. Um, I thought this would be kind of a cute, cozy little spot to film, so I hope it turns out as nice as I, I think it will. I'm super, 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 super excited to be in my new house and filming these new videos. I cannot wait to show you what 2024 has in store. I've got some pretty fun uh, collection room videos already in the making where we're doing the renos, we're setting things up. I have to pack stuff up at home. That's gonna be its own video. I'm super excited. I hope you're all very, very excited. But the new house is actually not the, uh, the purpose of this video. The purpose of this video is to wrap up 2023 with a top figures of 2023 video. If you've watched my channel for the last few years, you'll know I typically do these at the end of the year where I go through figures that were released this year and I talk about my favorites. So typically my top five will be figures that are released this year. So they have to be released in 2023 for the first time. And I actually purchased them. Now I have a few extra categories uh, at the end of the video. So I'll do like top re-release and stuff. So not everything is like fully new this year, but my top five figures that I will be showing you all released this year in 2023 and I purchased all of them. So I'm super excited to go through these figures. They're all bangers as usual. Um, I feel like every year figures almost get better and better. So I'm super, super excited to show you all those today. I do not have most of the figures with me at my new house yet. So I'm gonna be talking about them. Obviously I have B-roll from the haul videos and stuff that I filmed throughout the year. So I'll have tons and tons of B-roll of these figures as I talk about them, but I don't actually have them in my hands for the most part. There's a couple I do have here, but uh, not all of them. And if you're interested in knowing what my top five lose figures for 2023 are. You can actually go check that out on my Patreon at patreon.com slash Gwen Collects. So that video will be going up at the exact same time as this one if you're interested in seeing what my what my lewd picks are for this year. So yeah, before we get into my top five, I would like to give a big shout out to today's sponsor, Bai. As you guys know, Bai has been a longtime sponsor of Gwen Collects. I love, love, love to use their service and I use it a ton to buy figures, merch, art books, Etc. I love using Bai. They have been my longtime go-to proxy for anything and everything from Mercari, Yahoo Japan auctions, Yahoo Japan shopping, um, Melon books, etc. I love, love, love using Bai, and I highly, highly recommend using them as a proxy if you're looking at getting anything from Japan that might be a little bit trickier to get. I've personally been keeping an eye out for the False Lander Samurai. I really, really want to pick her up, and I've been watching those auctions come up and her pop up on Makari. I'm gonna, I'm gonna strike. I'm gonna strike at some point. So you guys just wait because I really, really want that figure. She is gorgeous. As usual, Bai has provided me with a coupon code. So if you sign up at the link in the description below, you will get a 10% off coupon for Bai and you'll help support Gwen Collects. So thank you so much to Bai for sponsoring this video. Let's get right into the top five figures. So I'm already starting off strong in fifth place here with Jataka of the Deer King. This is a Maithos figure from their National Treasure line. And it came out a bit earlier this year, a few months ago, I think in the summer at some point. And I fell in love with the design from the moment it was revealed. I pre-ordered it day one, I needed it. I, I was absolutely obsessed. Like I knew I needed it in my collection. I loved the color scheme of it. I loved the artistic base, the, the paint kind of flowing down between the pots. And then obviously the figure herself, I just thought was so beautiful and delicate and pretty. And I loved her like red sleeves with all the hieroglyph type illustrations on them. Just all around such a stunning figure. I knew I had to have it. And of course, knowing my ethos, they delivered beautifully. They just did such a wonderful job on this figure. She is quite small, but not like out of scale with their other figures. I think just the character herself is quite small. Um, I'm absolutely obsessed with this figure. I genuinely believe it's like a work of art. Like it doesn't even feel like an anime figure. It feels like a piece of art that I could like put in like, 
I don't know, like a dining room or like somewhere like fancy where I'm displaying like sculptures because I think she just looks so sculptural with that base and everything. She is just a stunning, stunning, stunning figure. Highly recommend picking her up. She wasn't even very expensive either. And I don't think she's gone up very much on the aftermarket. So I would definitely recommend picking her up if you can. Such a stunning figure. And she is not the last My Ethos figure on this list. In fourth place, I have an altar figure, which I feel like it's been a while since I got an altar figure that I really, really, really loved. Like one of their new releases. But this altar figure is the Idolmaster Shiny Colors, I gotta read the name because it's very long. Serizawa Asahi Sorato Auto Aitsu version. <laughs> uh, but it is the altar uh, Idolmaster figure where she's kind of leaping over the, the stoplights. Um, I have no idea who this character is. I'm not an Idolmaster fan. Like I, Not that I don't like it, I'm just not a fan of the series. Like I don't know the series very well. Um, but when I saw the prototype get revealed of this figure. I knew I had to, had to have her. She's just everything I like in a figure. She's very dynamic. She's very colorful. She's quite like streetwear, edgy, like cute fashion. I just, I knew I needed to have her. She was everything I loved. I just, I was obsessed with her. So I pre-ordered her and she was quite expensive. I think she was about 36,000 yen. And her shipping was pretty expensive as well. But honestly, she was so worth it. Alter always delivers. I never feel guilty ordering an Alter figure because I know that Alter will just deliver like 10 out of 10 every time. So of course she turned out absolutely amazing. Her base is so cool. I love how it like has that like digital effect that goes around the bottom. And then she's kind of leaping over the sign. Just the composition of the figure is amazing. It's a huge figure, way bigger than I was expecting, to be honest. Um, and just, just a gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous figure. Like, stunning. Like, I love her so much. So I'm so happy that she could be part of my collection. I have her displayed, like, in my old collection room. I had her displayed with, like, little addos on her base. And it was so cute. Because the base is really big. Like, there's room for another figure, almost. I think there is a Nendoroid of this character, so it might be kind of cute if you had the Nendoroid to like put her on the base too. I don't know, but absolutely love this figure. Of course, Alter delivers as they always do, and I could not be more happy to have her in my collection. Now, this top three was really, really hard to narrow down. I had a lot of trouble. I feel like on any given day, I could switch these three. Maybe first place would stay first place, let's be real, but like, Two and three, I definitely could switch back and forth depending on the day. Uh, but in third place, I have the Hatsune Miku Symphony 5th Anniversary Edition. This figure is just so gorgeous. I remember when they announced it, they announced like the unpainted prototype picture. Honestly, when I started collecting, like way, 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 way back. And I remember it was just like kind of a silhouette style photo of her. Like Miku was kind of in the dark with like gold around her. I'll put the photo on the screen here. And I remember just being like, I need her as a figure. Like Hatsune Miku is just so stunning. And then like ballet, like I just love ballerina figures and just everything about her was so beautiful. I was like, I need her in my collection. And after many, many long years, like this was back in 2020 when I knew about her. I finally got her at the beginning of this year. I think it was like beginning of the year. And the wait was worth it. She is so beautiful. I love this figure so much. Miku is just a classic figure. I think she'll never get old. And just seeing her in like her beautiful like gramophone style tutu and the bass is gorgeous. And the little music box she came with is just perfection. I love, love, love her. Oh, so much. Like she's just so gorgeous. I love her. So yeah, she's definitely in the top three of this year. Honestly, one of my favorite figures of all time. She is going to have such a place of honor in my new collection room and she matches the color scheme of my new collection room so well. So I'm just beyond excited to have her. Oh, I love her so much. Just a, a perfect figure. In second place, we have another My Ethos figure and it is the My Ethos original character, Equinoctal Dial. This figure, Again, it was one of those ones where like I saw the prototype photos and I was like, I must have it. Like she needs to be in my collection. So obviously instantly pre-ordered her as soon as she went up and I could not be more pleased with this figure. She is absolutely stunning. Like the level of detail my ethos put into the design of this figure is just insane. She's a collaboration with the British Museum. Uh, it's of an artifact there and 
I've never actually seen what the artifact looks like. Maybe I'll put a photo on the screen, but I feel like they did such an amazing job turning like an artifact into a piece of art. I really love all of their like original character treasure line series figures because I think they're just, just beautiful, beautiful stuff. Like this one with its like compass that she has, it's actually metal and you can like twist the inside. It's amazing. I love all the clouds around her and the stars and then just like the figure's pose and how dynamic it all is. Oh. She's just so gorgeous. I love her so much. Oh, I'm planning to display her with the Symphony Miku somehow because I just think they're like gold and beautiful and I, I just cannot wait to make a display with them because God, she's such a stunning figure. All right, and the moment you've all waited for, my top figure of 2023 is the Prism Studio Violet Evergarden Resin. Now, this is an unlicensed figure, so I was a little bit, I was debating putting her on this list because, I don't know, unlicensed figures to me are kind of a weird gray area where I, I prefer to buy licensed figures and I don't know, just, I don't love unlicensed stuff, but Kyoto Animation just does not want to take my money. I would give it to them if they would make me a Violet figure, but they won't. So I had to get a resin and honestly, this figure was just so stunning. I knew I had to take the chance and just get this resin. I think Prism Studio, this is their first figure or second figure maybe. So I took a bit of a chance on this studio and I am so happy I did. What a stunning figure. Everything about her is just perfect. Her face, her pose, the entire base is just so intricate and detailed and gorgeous that I just could not be more thrilled with how she turned out. And I'm not the only one because I didn't realize how high her aftermarket has gotten since she came out, but people are selling that thing for thousands, like over a grand on eBay, which is like insane to me. And like people have been offering to buy it off me. There were comments on my collection video that were like, name your price. Like I will buy that Violet off you immediately. But I'm sorry guys, I will not be selling her. She is like one of my most cherished figures in my collection. Oh, I love her so much. And while I do hope one day we do get a licensed Violet, maybe from Alter, I would love an Alter Violet. This one is just so beautiful and I'm so happy to have her in my collection. She's just stunning. And I love that while she is a resin, she's not absolutely massive or super, super heavy. Like she's a nice, just like one seventh scale. I can fit her in my cabinets, you know, like it, it, as much as I love like huge, elaborate one fourth scale resins, I don't have enough space for those. Like I have nowhere to put them. <laughs> so having her as a one seventh scale with just so much detail and presence on my shelf, it just, it makes me so happy. I love her so much. And she is definitely deserving of the top spot this year. Okay, and now I have four like sub, not, not subcategories, like four um, honorable mention categories that I wanted to mention this year. And I actually have some of these figures uh, with me. So that's kind of nice. I'll actually be able to hold some of them because they're in the new house. So the first bonus category is the top re-release category. And while we did get a lot of amazing re-releases this year, including X10, which almost made this list, but due to her like QC issues, I didn't really want her to make the list just cause like, I don't know, to me that reduces you from being the best figure. Like no matter how nice the design of a figure is, if it has quality control issues, that's that, you know, it can't be top of the year if it has issues. But one company that really delivered in my opinion is Kotobukiya. They really deliver with their re-releases, which makes me happy because I enjoy getting re-releases and not paying inflated aftermarket prices. So next year, I can guarantee you guys that my top re-release in this video, you don't even need to watch my 2024 video because the top re-release will be the Dancing Star Night Joker. He will be, period. So anyway, Kotobukiya slays with their re-releases and they slayed with this year's top re-release, which is the Lily figures. So I have with me at my new house, this one that I actually ordered the re-release of. I have the Lily and Cosmog figures from Kotobukiya, but I didn't have Lily and Clefairy. So as soon as they announced these two re-releases, I instantly ordered them. I would say both of these are my top re-release because they kind of released together. Um, I'm so happy that Kotobukiya re-released them because the aftermarket on these guys was crazy. I know how many people love their Pokemon figures and Lily is just such a cute and fun character. I think she has the best Pokemon figures in my opinion. They're just so cute. Like look how cute this Clefairy is that's on here. Adorable, you know? 
So I'm super, super happy that Kotobukiya did a re-release of these. I think it was so necessary because so many people wanted these. And the Little League and Cosmoke is still like one of my absolute fave figures. She is just so cute. So yeah, super, super, super happy about this re-release. And this is my top re-release of 2023. Now my top Nendoroid of 2023 should not be a surprise to any of you guys. And it is the Mugen Nendoroid. Obviously I had to pick him. Seeing this announcement was the most like hype thing ever for me. I was so happy that I'd finally get to have a another Mugen figure, another Samurai Champloo figure in my collection. And it preceded the announcements of the pop-up parades. So overall, I am just so, so, so happy that us Samurai Champloo fans are getting fed because we deserve it. We need more Samurai Champloo figures. Now I'm praying 2024 brings us a scale because that would just be the, the icing on, on the cake but I'm super, super happy to have this Nendoroid. I think he's so cute. And I can't wait to move him into my new house and put him on my desk in my office. I'm just so excited. So I have two categories left. The second last category is my Gwen Collects Best Value for Money Award. This year, this award goes to the Pop-Up Parade Large Vampire Miku. Uh, again, another Miku. I just, I love Miku figures. I feel like you can't go wrong with Miku figures. And I actually have been really, really liking Good Smile Company's Pop-Up Parade Large line. They're making amazing, amazing figures in this line for like 70 to $80 a piece, which I think is fantastic. And the quality of them is so good. Like the Vampire Miku is such high quality. She does not look out of place at all with my scale figures. One of my big complaints with the pop-up parade line is that they're really, really tiny. So I love that they're doing these pop-up parade larges that are essentially just scales, like they're scale figure size, but not for a scale figure price. And I think while you can tell they skimp on the details here and there, I think where it counts, they do include those details and they have like really nice sculpts, faces, etc. Even if the shading might be more lacking, I think your value for money with these pop-up parade large figures is like top-notch, honestly. So yeah, absolutely love this figure. Absolutely love that they're doing like Miku music video figures. I'm really hoping we get like the, the girl from Godish. I would be super, super hyped about that. Uh, but there's so many good Vocaloid songs that I would love to see more of these pop-up parade large from Vocaloid songs because they're just so cute. So yeah, definitely best value for money is Vampire Miku. So there's one final category this year and it is the best bunny category. And I thought I would add this because I didn't have any bunnies in my top five this year. Uh, so I wanted to do a shout out to the bunny figures because I know there's a lot of bunny figure collectors out there. I personally am quite a large bunny figure collector. So I felt like I needed to include a best bunny award. Now this one is kind of cheating because it's kind of a re-release. But in my opinion, this one's better than the original and it is changed, so yeah. But my best bunny award of 2023 goes to the tanned Caroline Yuri bunny. She was one of the first figures that I got to move into my new house because she kind of came around the time I was moving. So I do have her here. And this bunny is literally so stunning. Like, look at how big she is. Like, ah, oh, I love her so much. She is absolutely gorgeous so perfect and while she is kind of a re-release i think the tanned version is better than the original just in my opinion and so i had to include her as the best bunny of the year because obviously she is the best bunny of the year i don't think you could beat this <laughs> so yeah caroline takes the cake and finishes off this video with the best bunny award for 2023 all right so i hope you all enjoyed this video Thank you all so much for being there with me for 2023. It was a very busy year in my life and I know I fell behind a bit on my, my videos. So thank you all for bearing with me. Uh, I'm super, super, super excited for what 2024 has in store. Um, I love figure collecting. And while I think a lot of collecting has slowed down in the past year, I think the community is still grow going strong and I love talking to each and every one of you. I think this year has been a fantastic year and I'm just too excited to see what happens next year. So thank you all so much for being part of my channel this year. Let me know what your top figures of 2023 are in the comments below. Do you agree with my choices? Do you have other choices? I'd also like to know what you guys think is the overall top figure of the year. Usually I do a top figure of the year award, but I felt like there weren't any that were super noteworthy to me this year. 
So I'd love to know in the comments if there is one that's super noteworthy. Maybe Strawberry Miku, but she comes out this month, so no one really knows how she's gonna turn out. I don't know. So let me know what you guys think the top figure of 2023 is overall. Uh, I'd love to hear in the comments below. As always, thank you all so much for watching. Thank you to all of my patrons over on Patreon, and an even bigger thank you to all of my Chica Tier patrons. Jackety, Remember June, Melinda, Leon Blade, and Retro Richie. Thank you all so much for your support. Also a huge thanks to Bayi for sponsoring this video. As always, I hope you all have a very wonderful day and I'll see you next time. Bye.